Hello everyone, it's Stella. And Taryn here from Meeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play After Us, a game designed by Florian Siriex with art by Vincent Dutre and published by Pandasaurus Games. Let's get to the game. In After Us, players take on the roles of competing tribes of primates, doing their best to survive, thrive and gather intelligence in a post-human world. Players will work out the most efficient way to arrange their tribes, gather resources, and use them to gain intelligence, and use them to recruit bigger and better apes into their tribes. The game is a race to 80 points, and whoever has the most points when someone gets there will win the game. To set up, each player takes a player board and the matching coloured wooden pieces, cardboard tokens, help card, and eight starter tamarind cards showing their flag, which are shuffled into a face down pile. Stack your cardboard tokens on your player board, as well as one of your counters, which goes at zero on the rage track, and place the other on the main scoring track at zero. For the remaining cards, separate them into eight separate decks by image and place them on their matching spaces of the board. You'll have mandrels, orangutans, gorillas and chimpanzees, each in levels 1 and 2. Separately shuffle each deck and place it face down. Choose any three of the seven object tiles and place them near the board. They'll be available for all players through the game. Return all of the others to the box. This set of three is recommended for your first game. Finally, make supplies of the four basic resources, energy, fruit, flowers, and grain. These are considered unlimited, and you can use this section of your player board as a triple multiplier if you need. You're now ready to play. After Us is played in rounds, and each round is played in three simultaneous phases. There is no turn order. The phases are assembling the tribe, during which you'll draw and lay out four ape cards from your deck, resolving all of the effects that you create on those cards. Second is attracting new apes, during which you'll use one of your tokens to choose a bonus and choose a type of ape that you'll pay to add to your deck. And third, resting, where you'll reset for the next round. First is assembling the tribe, and all players complete this simultaneously. Draw the top four cards from your ape deck. If you need to draw a card and your deck is empty, shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck. Now lay your chosen cards face up in front of yourself and rearrange them into whichever order you think suits your strategy best. What you'll be trying to do is create completed frames. That is, boxes that are completely surrounded by a black outline, as it's only your completed frames within this tribe which are going to resolve. Some frames come pre-completed, but in most cases, they're going to hang off the left or right of your card, and you'll need to arrange them in such a way to create the frames you want. Once you've finished, resolve all of your completed frames from left to right, top to bottom. The top row of any tribe line is all about gaining resources. Here, you would skip this fruit, then you would gain a flower and a grain, then another flower and a grain, an energy, two fruit, and you'd skip this final grain. The second row is all about gaining intelligence, or victory points, represented by the light bulb. And you'll find a series of frames which either simply give you victory points, or give you a way of spending resources to gain points. Here, for example, spending a flower and a fruit for a point. Resolving these frames is optional. At the start of the game, your third row is only going to contain costs. There are no benefits in the third row of the Tamarind cards. You'll only start to unlock some abilities down here once you recruit some more apes into your deck. So for now we'll move on and we'll come back to some of these effects later on. Once you've finished resolving all of your cards, wait until all players have finished and then all players move on to phase two. To begin the Attracting New Apes phase, all players choose any one of their four player tokens, placing it face down in front of themselves, and then revealing simultaneously. Once these are revealed, all players may resolve the next three steps independently of each other and simultaneously. 
First, gain the bonus, which is printed in the top half of this token. In this case, it's two points, and it will vary depending on which ape token you've chosen. Secondly, you may recruit one ape of the type matching the token you've played. The cost depends on the type of ape you're attracting and whether you want a level 1 or level 2 card. A level 1 mandrel, for example, would cost you 3 flowers. A level 2 gorilla would cost 6 grain. While a level 1 chimpanzee would cost you any 3 matching resources, excluding energy. You are limited to attracting from the column whose token you chose, and attracting a new ape is optional, you can still claim the bonus even if you don't attract an ape. To attract, pay the resources, take the top card blindly from the deck. You may look at your new card, but then place it face down on top of your deck. As the final step of this phase, each player may spend two matching resources, including energy, in order to use the bonus showing on the top half of any one of their two neighbours' tokens. You may do this once per round. Finally, you'll move to the resting phase, where you discard the cards from your tribe to your own personal discard pile, and then return the token you chose to your total supply of four. You'll now proceed to the next round. The essence of the game is in creating strong combinations of the different ape cards, and each of the four ape types has a different flavour. These are indicated by the icons shown here. Mandrel cards tend to be much more geared towards ways of gaining victory points. Here you can see the bottom row abilities on these cards look much like the middle row abilities, providing more and more ways of spending resources for points. You'll also see the resource row and the costs are more heavily geared towards flowers, which is what you'll pay to gain a mandrel. Orangutan cards are more focused on gaining energy. Here you can see both the top and bottom rows of these cards, providing many more ways of gaining energy. Some energy can be spent on gaining points and rewards from these cards, but one of energy's primary uses is to activate the objects. Each player may activate each object up to once per round, and in the phase shown here. These offer various helpful abilities and flexibilities, here, for example, after drawing in Phase 1, you can discard one card to draw a new one. Here in Phase 2, you could spend 6 or 9 energy to gain a level 1 or level 2 ape from the display. And that's in addition to the usual attracting of an ape. This one simply lets you cash in 5 energy for 5 points, and with 7 total objects in the game, there are many combinations you can try. Orangutan cards are more heavily geared towards fruit than the other basic resources. Gorilla cards are all about gaining rage, and rage is an effective way to optimise your deck. The bottom row effects are focused on rage. And when you gain rage, you'll track it on this track. As a free action during any phase, you may spend 4 rage to trash, removing it from the game permanently, any one of the face-up cards currently in your tribe. You'll often do this with your starter cards to make your deck overall more powerful, and when you do this, gain the resource shown in the top right corner before removing it. All cards that you'll gain during the game have a 3-point bonus when you remove them in this way. Removing a card may change some frames from complete to incomplete meaning they can no longer be resolved, so pick the timing of your rage effects appropriately. Gorilla resources and costs are more geared towards grain than the other resources. Finally, chimpanzees will mimic the other apes' abilities. Bottom row benefits on the chimpanzees will all give you this mimic ability, and this allows you to activate any single other frame anywhere within your tribe. This includes paying the full cost and gaining the full reward. Chimpanzees have a pretty even distribution of the basic resources gained and spent. As a final note, because all of these apes tend to generate the same type of resource it costs to attract them, it can be very easy to specialise in only one or two types of apes. There are, however, some direct benefits for not doing that. A frame showing the three different icon activates only if you have three different types of apes in your assembly. 
And a frame like this one will score based on the number of tamarins, that is your starting cards, that you still have in that assembly. Working towards these cards gives you some benefit for diversification. The game end is triggered when one player reaches 80 or more points. You'll play until the end of the current phase only, not playing the rest of the round if it was an early phase, and whoever has the highest score at the end of that phase wins. The game end can also be triggered in phase two if there are not enough cards left in one of the decks to resolve the full demand for that type of card. In this situation, you'll create a once-off turn order by determining who has the highest single numbered card based on these numbers in the bottom left corners of the cards. Resolve your attract an ape step in that turn order and then play out the rest of the complete round. Either way, the player or players with the highest score win. And that's how to play After Us. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Everything you do will help us. Every single view, every time you like our videos, our Instagram, every single comment, and let us know that you're there. And make sure you're doing something fun today, like gardening, cooking, or whatever. See you next time.